Hello again, my name's John and welcome to my latest video. This time I'll share with you how I make these beautiful one third whole wheat flour baguettes that you see on screen. These baguettes are very similar to my ordinary white bread flour baguette video, but with a few slight changes to the recipe and waiting times. Over the years I've tried various percentages of wholemeal flour from 25% to 100% and found that my personal ideal combination is one third wholemeal flour to two thirds white bread flour. This way you still get a good percentage of whole wheat fibre in your diet, but still maintaining a light, crispy, delicious and healthy baguette. Now I mill my own whole wheat flour. So just out of interest, I thought I'd show you how I manage this. Obviously, I don't expect most of you to mill your own flour. You just buy yours. But try to find a wholemeal flour that has 14% protein in the contents. I'm not being sponsored by anyone, by the way. I just thought you'd find this part of my process interesting. And this is the wheat I use. It's a high protein organic wheat. I buy this in 25 kilogram bags which last me about a year so I save quite a bit of money too. Apparently if stored correctly in the proper container and conditions this wheat can last up to 30 years and it will still grow when planted. Ok I'll measure off 1 kilogram of wheat that's two of these jokes each containing 500 grams. You've got to hold this with two hands as it's got a bit of a kick when you start this thing as it has a powerful motor. And that's the second jug of wheat going in. And that's about all there is to it. One kilogram of wheat grain in and one kilogram of whole meal flour out. With no additives or preservatives, just pure unadulterated high protein organic whole wheat flour. Brilliant. Now I'll get started with the baguette recipe. I'll start by weighing off 233 grams, that's 8.2 ounces of wholemeal flour, which is one third of the total amount of flour needed for this recipe. Next is 466 grams, that's 16.4 ounces of strong white bread flour. Now the total amount of flour used should be 699 grams, that's 24.6 ounces. The water. The best way to measure the water for this or any recipe is to weigh it. And the most accurate unit to measure it in is in grams. A gram in the UK is the same as a gram anywhere else on the planet. But I'll give the weight in ounces too. But that's not fluid ounces, it's ounces on the scales. See what I mean? There's absolutely no uncertainty or ambiguity with grams. And for this recipe, it's 520 grams, that's 18.3 ounces of cold water. The yeast for this recipe is one level teaspoon of active or instant dried yeast. And just out of interest, that should weigh 4 grams or 0.15 ounces, and that's just about spot on. If you're using fresh yeast for this recipe, you'll need 15 grams or half an ounce. The salt you'll need for this recipe is one and a half teaspoons or nine grams of kosher salt or one teaspoon, that's six grams of ordinary table salt. 
By the way, there's a full list of the ingredients at the start of the video. I'll also include a full list in the description box under the video. OK, I'll start the recipe by adding the flour and the yeast to a bowl and giving that a good mix using a whisk. If you're using fresh yeast, dissolve it in the jug of water and give the water a good whisk. Now I'll add the salt and whisk that in too, then put the whisk away. You don't need that anymore. Time to add the water. Pour the whole lot into the bowl and start to blend it together. I like to use my trusty wooden spoon handle to do this part. It seems to be the perfect implement for mixing this type of dough. However, if you find this a little difficult to do, you can use a stand mixer using the dough hook on very slow speed, but for no more than one minute, and only for this initial mix. Don't forget to scrape down the sides of the bowl. Once the dough has been formed, and you'll notice when the dough looks shaggy and starts sticking to the bowl, cover the bowl with some sort of plastic wrap or even put it in a plastic bag. I use the shower cap. The idea is to lock in the moisture and not let any of the water vapour evaporate. Now the dough needs to develop over a 3 hour period but it has to be turned and knocked back every 45 minutes, just the same as my other baguette recipe. This is probably the most important part of the process, because this is where the fantastic taste and texture is achieved. I know this seems to annoy a lot of my viewers, but if you want probably the best bread you've ever tasted, this is what you have to do. And to be honest, a 3 hour proofing time is not long compared to some artisan bread recipes. If you want a quicker bread to try, have a go at my sandwich loaf on my channel. I'll leave a link in the description box below the video. Right, that's the first rest and rise period over with. Now scrape the dough out of the bowl using a spatula onto a slightly wet bench as shown in the video. And give it a few turns making sure your hands are wet, like you see me doing. Try to emulate the way I'm manipulating the dough. I believe this is a common French kneading technique and it's very effective. You can actually see the dough becoming smoother with each stroke. If you find it a bit difficult, fold the dough the best you can. All you're doing is knocking back the dough and then evening out the temperature so it rises evenly. The folding process shouldn't take more than 30 seconds. You don't want to be overworking the dough. Right, cover the dough again and set the timer for the second 45 minutes. Try to keep your work area clean and tidy after each rest and rise period. Each time you remove the cover you'll see the dough has developed a little more as the yeast is doing all the hard work for you. If for some reason you're not seeing your dough rise then there's a good possibility your yeast is no good. So before you attempt making these do a test on the yeast first. I show you how to do this on my sandwich loaf video on my channel. Check that out first and have your yeast prove itself before starting any bread project. I'll leave a link in the description box below the video. Ok, that's the end of the third rest and rise period, and as you can see the door looks full bodied and smooth. I'll give the door its last fold and cover it for the final 45 minutes. And while that's happening, I can begin to get a few things ready to start forming these baguettes.
one of the first things you need to get ready is a 75 centimeter or 30 inch length of cling film or cling wrap. Cover the cling film with a fine coat of vegetable oil. This is to cover the pre-shaped baguettes as you'll see a little later in the video. Next you'll need what's known in the trade as a baker's couche. All this is is a well floured cloth to rest the baguettes on for the final rise. I use a cotton pillowcase for mine as it's a lot cheaper than the real couche material and it does the same job. Just hope my wife doesn't watch this video. Ok I'll give the bench a good dusting of flour and I'll do this next to the couche so I don't have far to transfer the baguettes when I start to form them. I also have a small bowl of all purpose or plain flour handy with a little baby sieve for dusting. Now the last 45 minute rest period is over and it's time to start to form the baguettes. I'll begin by scraping out the dough into the middle of the floured bench and give the dough a light dusting of flour. Then I'll divide the dough into four equal pieces using the scraper. If the quantity of ingredients were correct at the start of the recipe, your finished dough should weigh 1230 grams, that's 2 pound 11 ounces. So each dough piece when divided should weigh 307 grams, that's just under 11 ounces. Once the dough has been equally divided, I need to pre-shape the baguettes as the dough has to rest a while before forming them into the proper baguette shape. Just copy the way I'm doing them in the video. Once all four are pre-shaped, cover them with the oiled cling film and let them rest for 20 minutes. And like I said earlier, this will make forming the finished baguettes a lot easier. And the reason for this is when dough has been handled, the gluten strands tighten up but once it has been allowed to rest a while, the gluten strands relax again and it becomes much easier to shape. Okay, now those pre-shapes are done, I'll cover them with that oil cling foam I did earlier and set the timer for 20 minutes. Time to start forming the finished baguette shape. Take a piece of the dough. If it's a bit sticky add a little flour and then manipulate the dough into a rectangle like you see in the video. Now roll the dough down towards you from the top of the rectangle, tucking in the ends as you go. Once you get to the end use the heel of your thumb to seal the baguette leaving the seam on the bottom. Then simply form it into the long baguette shape and then carefully transfer it to the couche using the material to separate each baguette from its neighbour.
OK, rather than make another two long baguettes from the last two pieces of dough, I'll make four mini ones. They're made exactly the same as the long ones, just a bit of a variation in the length. These are great for making salad sandwiches with. Right, I'll just let you watch as I finish off the rest of the mini baguettes and I'll speak again once they're all done and on the couche. OK, that's them all done. Now I'll cover them with my light holy tea towel and set the timer for 25 minutes, as it's pretty warm in my kitchen today, by which time they should have risen enough to start baking them. If your house is on the cold side, it may take a little longer. Now after 15 minutes, I'll turn on the oven and that'll give it 10 minutes to get up to temperature, but I'll speak more about the oven in a minute. OK, there's only 10 minutes left on the timer. It's now time to preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius. That's 395 Fahrenheit or gas mark 6. I'm setting mine to 180 Celsius because my oven is fan assisted and it runs about 20 degrees hotter than indicated on the dial. To make nice crispy baguettes, they need to bake in a steamy atmosphere, so carefully place a pan of boiling water on the bottom shelf of the oven just after you've turned it on. You'll also need a spray bottle handy for a couple of things as you'll see a little later. Right, the time is up. If your baguettes haven't risen as much as mine, give them a little more time. But like I said earlier, my kitchen is pretty warm today and that'll make them rise a bit quicker. When it's cold in my house, I sometimes have to wait up to 45 minutes. And as you can imagine, this is one of the problems with making bread videos, as it's very difficult to use set times, as everyone has different conditions in their homes. So you'll just have to rely on visuals. If your baguettes look like these, then they're ready to bake. OK, I need a couple of lightly greased baking trays. This first tray is for the four mini baguettes and I have a longer one for the larger baguettes. Once they're on the tray, give the baguettes a quick spray with water. This will make them easier to score. So using a very sharp knife or razor blade, score the dough the same way as I'm doing in the video, making sure you overlap each cut. This will allow the baguette to rise evenly in the oven. The diagram should give you a better idea of what I mean. These small ones get three cuts each and the big ones get four. OK, I'll just set those aside till I get the two larger baguettes on their tray. To transfer the large baguettes, I use my homemade peel or flipping board. All it is is just a piece of strong cardboard covered in aluminium foil. It works great.
Now just do the same as with the smaller ones. A quick spray of water, only difference is these get scored four times. Time to start baking the baguettes. Carefully put the trays into the oven. I'm putting the larger baguettes on the top and the smaller ones underneath. No particular reason, as these fan assisted ovens do tend to cook pretty evenly between top and bottom. But I've noticed mine seems to be hotter at the back of the oven. That's why I like to turn my bread part way through. Now just before closing the door, give the oven a quick spray with the water for extra crispiness. Mmm. Crispiness. I don't think that's a word actually, but it definitely should be. The large baguettes take approximately 17 minutes to cook and the smaller ones about 15. So I'll set the timer for 10 minutes then give them a quick turn for even cooking. Be careful when opening the oven door, release the steam slowly. As you can see the baguettes have sprung quite a bit. Looking at these, the large ones need another 7 to 8 minutes, and the mini baguettes are almost there, so I'll set the timer for a further 5 minutes, then take the small ones out. Ok, the smaller ones are done, so I'll take those out. I know they look a little light and underdone on this camera, but I assure you it's my video lights reflecting off the bread. Now I'll set the timer for another 2 minutes to finish off the large baguettes. And there's the small ones, all cooked and looking a lot better in this light. And they are wonderfully light, also you can hear how crispy they are as I'm taking them off the baking tray. And the smell is absolutely gorgeous. Ok, it's time to take out the large ones. And they're cooked enough for me. If you want them a bit darker, give them a couple of more minutes, but not too long. You've invested a lot of time in making these and the last thing you want is to burn them. And there they are, all golden brown and looking delicious. Right, let's have a look inside of one of these mini baguettes. The one thing you'll notice about these wholemeal baguettes is you don't get a really large crumb or bubbles in the bread, like you do with ordinary white bread flour baguettes. I've no idea why, but I suppose it's to do with the wholemeal flour. Regardless, these are very light for a 33% wholemeal bread. Now the only thing to do while it's still warm is to try a piece with some of my homemade butter. I have a video on my channel how I make this butter. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description box below the video. And honestly, that is absolutely beautiful. I personally think these homemade baguettes are tastier than the ordinary white bread baguettes, but as usual my wife disagrees. I really hope you give these a try, it does take a while but it's well worth the time and it's also very enjoyable to make this type of top quality bread. And amazingly it only takes 4 simple ingredients to make this bread. 
flour, water, yeast and salt. So, thanks again for watching. I'll be back with another recipe very soon. Please like, share, comment and maybe subscribe by hitting the circle above. In the meantime, here's some of my other videos you may want to watch. Bye for now.